What's going on guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different than what we're used to on my channel, but I've been needing a draw board for some time now and I've decided rather than spending several hundred bucks on one that I would just make one myself for around 50 bucks. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do this, how to put it together and see how it works. And we may even go over my homemade bow press. You guys stick with me and let's get into it. So now we're gonna go over the parts it's gonna take to build this, and our main component is this boat winch right here. Now there's many on the market, and some of them use cables. I opted for the strap. Um, this particular model is the Hallmaster part number 65115. It is a 1200 pound capacity with a 20 foot strap. It has a 4.25 to one gear ratio, and it has a pretty easy to operate gear brake release handle right here. So next thing we're gonna need is a way to hold our bow. What we're gonna use is half inch pipe. This is a half by six schedule 40 nipple. And I've got a half inch cap and a half inch furniture flange here. So we'll wind up wrapping this length right here with electrical tape to protect the surface of our bow. We'll also use this carabiner here. And this is a 360 pound working load. So this will be perfect for what we need. And what this will do, this will hook into our hook here and then we will attach that to our bowstring. So to check our draw link, we've got this aluminum uh, Pittsburgh ruler here, yardstick, it is 48 inches and we will secure this down to our board. Now all of this is gonna be attached to a two by eight cut to about six foot in length, and that's gonna give us plenty of room to add a bow scale in between the hook and the bow if we choose later on. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do that, just don't have the bow scale right now. Now I wanna add that you could probably use a two by six to do this with, but I chose two by eight because it's a little bit wider, obviously, so that might give us a little bit more stability whenever you're racking this bow. So I'll go ahead and cut our two by eight down to six foot and we will go ahead and start putting everything together. All right, so I've cut my board down to six foot. I even went the extra mile and routered the edges. So I've got nice, round smooth edges so the next step i'm going to take is i'm going to go ahead and mount my furniture flange to the end down here for my post now i've already made some lines here and pre-drilled some stuff so i can make this video as short as possible but what i've done is i've pulled from the end to two and a half inches and that's going to be the center here i'm going to go ahead and center this up and screw this down and then once i get this screwed down i'll put the pipe in there I'll pull a measurement from the back of the pipe here. I'll pick a measurement on the other side of the flange. For example, I've picked two and a quarter and then add an inch and three quarters to it, which will give you the rest of your draw length. And then that will give me four inches. So I will cut off four inches and I've already done that here. It allows me to line it up with my mark there and put it in the center without bumping into my post here. So we'll go ahead and screw this down and then we'll do some double checking before we bolt that down. So I've got this loosely placed here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double check my measuring stick before I tighten it down. So I'm gonna take an inch and three quarters, sorry if you can't read my crappy tape measure, and I'm gonna line it up with the outside of my pipe. So that's inch and three quarters. And so I'm gonna pick a measurement like five, and that is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Check it one more time. Five and five is lined up, and inch and three quarters. So I can go ahead and tighten this the rest of the way down. And now we have our draw length measure attached. So I'll go ahead and tighten this down and I'll go ahead and wrap it with electrical tape and then we will get to mounting the winch. Thank you. 
Now this will give a good surface for the bow to sit on without worrying about scratching the finish off your bow. And it also adds some non-slip properties too. All right, so the next part is gonna be mounting this winch to the board. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is take this spool off, which will allow us to uh, be able to access the mounting holes at the bottom to make this process a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll put it on our board, take some measurements and mark some holes. I'm gonna be mounting it with three quarter 20 bolts. And I'm also gonna put some extra screws in there just in case. Let's get this spool off and see what we're working with. All right, so we've got three holes here, one here, and then a uh, slotted hole here. We're gonna go ahead and find out where we're gonna put this on the board so we can mark our holes. So I had already measured this with the spool on and our overall length from front of the base to the back of the spool is about seven inches. So I'm gonna leave about two inches from the back for mounting purposes, just in case I wanna mount it somewhere permanently. Measure from the back and we're gonna mark a line at nine inches. And that is going to be the front. I'm also going to mark a line in the center. Now I've already checked the handle on this. If we put this in the center, our handle will still be able to turn. So we've got plenty of room in the center. So we'll go ahead and square this up. So I've got some good holes marked here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drill some quarter inch holes. I'm gonna use one in the back, two in the front, and then I'll put another wood screw here just in case. So I've got my holes drilled. Now what I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna put the heads of my screw on the underside, these are quarter inch holes and I'm gonna take a half inch drill bit and I'm just going to countersink these just a little bit. Just enough to bury the head. So we'll go ahead, put our screws in. All my screws are flush. Now we'll take our base, stick it on. So we've got it bolted down. And we're gonna put a couple extra screws in here just in case. All right, so now we've got a total of three bolts and two screws in here. So that will definitely be enough to get us by. So we're gonna go ahead and put our spool back in. Okay, so the only thing we're missing now is our carabiner and you don't want to put this big old hook onto your bowstring. One, it's not in the correct orientation. It would need to be like this. So that's why we have this carabiner. You can clip this onto your hook and hook your bowstring onto this and then reel it in. So let's back this thing up and see if we can make it work. All right, so first thing we wanna do is we'll go ahead and Pull our winch out and we will lock it or engage it. And I need to put my screw in there. So that way that won't come out. And we can go ahead and put our bow in. It's gonna be best if you put your sight facing down. That way you're not rubbing on your rest and on your sight. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put that pipe right here in the deepest part of your grip. And then with your strap flat, you're gonna go ahead and hook this onto your string. Hook it on your string rather than your D-loop. And you can go ahead and engage. And then pay special attention to your string or your cable stops to make sure you do not overdraw it. And we just hit that valley. 
So you can see it's kind of loose. String stops are not touching. String stops are perfectly touching now. That's gonna put my draw length at about 28 and a quarter. There's several things that an archer needs a draw board for. And it is to, one, you can check your draw length. Two, if you have a bow scale, you can put it in between your strap and your bowstring, and you can check your draw weight. Another big advantage of having a draw board is to be able to check your cam timing. If I would have noticed that one of my cable stops was touching before the other, I would have known that my cams were out of tune and that my bow needed some attention. Lastly, this also allows you to check your cam lean while at full draw. Now my bow is the Elite Cure and it has a set technology uh, where you can adjust cam lean on the fly, uh, but it is very difficult to draw your bow back and to be able to check your, your cam lean while you're holding the bow at full draw. So that is a great advantage of having a draw board. So uh, I've got 35 bucks in the winch. I've got about seven bucks in the board, seven bucks in the measuring stick, and probably 10 bucks in the pipe fittings down there. So you're talking about 58 bucks here. And this thing is really invaluable, especially uh, the ones that you can buy online are, you know, upwards of, you know, 175 on up to three or four hundred dollars. So this is something that is cheap and very easy to make. And I believe that every archer needs one in their shop. So I'm going to go ahead and let this down and then we'll take a look at my makeshift bow press. So this is another DIY project that I've done, and this is my homemade bow press. And surprisingly, it works really well. Now, along with the draw board, I did find this design online. I've seen where people double up the two by fours, and I just didn't think that was necessary. Two by fours tend to be pretty strong. As long as you don't have any knots and splits in the wood, you know, I think it's pretty safe to do here. So another thing that I would recommend is definitely greasing the moving side, the side that you're going to be bringing in to press the bow. It doesn't take much. All you need to do is put a little bit of grease on the inside of the wood hole and then put a little bit on the pipe. And then that way, whenever you're letting off of it, it doesn't bind up. It'll just slide back like it's supposed to. So I'll slide it in there and uh, you know we'll press it a little bit and show you how it works. And then uh, we'll put it into this video. So it can be a little cumbersome to put this in here. Um, one thing I wanna make sure that you guys do if you build this is you make sure you take your limb stops off. Uh, because if you do not, then what you'll wind up doing is forgetting they're there and you will break them off and possibly bend your cam. So like I said, my setup here is a little bit cumbersome because I don't have, you know, stops for the limbs to just sit on, but I will put those on there in the future. But I do have little divots in there. So the screws on the limbs, you know, sit inside of it. So it's not putting any weird or awkward pressure on it. So you make sure that your cams are not touching the wood. And all you have to do is press it. And it actually worked out that the um, angle that these wood pieces sat, it was the perfect angle of the ends of my limbs there. So you can see that I'm putting some pressure on it and this string here is hanging down. I'm not gonna go any further because um, this is not what this video is about. I just wanted to show you guys. So you can see that it just comes back out on its own. So easy as that. Maybe I'll do a video for this later on. So that's all we've got for this little DIY video. I really hope that I helped somebody learn how to save some money. And if you're a DIY type of person, uh, this ought to be pretty easy for you guys. You know, less than 60 bucks in this. And I think that it is an invaluable piece of equipment, um, especially when it comes to tuning your bow, uh, because everybody wants the best out of their bow, but nobody wants to buy the best equipment. Stay tuned. I think I've made up my mind that I'll do a video on my DIY bow press. Uh, should be a pretty short one. But thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time in Rob's Man Cave.